Welcome to Bandit's Keep. I'm Daniel. In this video, I'm going to talk about prepping for games. I see lots of advice out there about this and lots of different angles, so I thought I'd throw my ideas into the ring and let you guys know how I prep for my various campaigns that I have. Now, I'll start off by saying that generally speaking, I run a sandbox campaign. That is to say that the players and their characters drive forward the story, if you will. I don't have a set big boss or any of the stuff starting out ever, really. <laughs> the big boss becomes whoever the players, you know, interact with and how the world shifts around them. The other thing that I do is I also insert, though, published modules. Like I might take a classic module. Like right now I'm adding A1 from Advanced Dungeons and Dragons into my current campaign. But what's real important here is that I started small, I let it grow, and I adapted. And this makes my prep so much easier. So I'm going to talk about the process of starting the campaign and also just kind of staying on top of it week to week. Okay, so I'm going to talk about a couple of resources to start with. This is for starting the campaign. And I'll put links to them in the description below. The first is a series of blog posts called Just Three Hexes by Chicago Wiz Games. In these posts, they talk about the idea that you can start off a campaign with just three hexes. One of the things that we often do as referees or dungeon masters or whatever game you're running is we try to build the whole world. But what's really important is what's right next to the PCs. So with this mindset and by looking at the examples they have there, you'll get an idea of how you can start real simple. A base town, again, a basic base town, which we'll talk about, and a couple of interesting things that the player characters hear about, maybe even a, quote, mission to start with, and then from there, we'll grow. The other thing I want to talk about, and this has been talked about a lot because it's awesome, is the Gygax 75 Challenge by Ray Otis. Ray basically took a old article that Gary Gygax had written about starting your campaign and effectively made it a little bit more like action steppable, we'll call it. Is that how you say it? But he basically broke it down into actual action steps and kind of some translation and some examples. And it's really great. But the part I want to talk about from this is not all that, because that's not about making something really fast. But the idea of the beginning of the campaign, which is that, and I'll, this is going to be, I'm going to read from Gygax. Step one is something you do in your head. Now, fantasy swords and sorcery games need not have any fixed basis for the assumptions made by its referee. My own doesn't. Except those which embrace the whole of fantasy. This sort of campaign can mix any and all of the various bases, which will be mentioned below, and then some. He talks about the idea that if you have some ideas like Princess of Mars, you don't necessarily want to tell your players that because they might read too much into it, but you want to be inspired by it. So basically, the first step in any of this is just to think about what you want to do. The idea being that I like a lot of fantasy type of stuff. I like sci-fi. I like Lovecraft. I like whatever you like. Clark Ashton Smith is better than Lovecraft. Make some notes. For instance, me, I love Andre Norton's Witch World. So when I read those books, I think to myself, oh, this would be a great setting to run in. I wouldn't necessarily use all of it. I'm not going to use the characters. I'm not going to use the exact locations, but I'm only going to use the vibe, the ideas, the concepts. And from there, I'm just going to make a quick bullet points for myself. This is going to give me an overall feel for the world and help me create those first three hexes. Generally speaking, my trick to cutting prep time is to just always be prepping. So what I personally do is I keep this notebook. I have a bunch of these, one for each campaign. They are dot grid. I'll see if I can find them. I think I got them on Amazon. I'll see if I can find a link and put them below if you're interested. Basically, I keep this with me all the time. It's just open on my desk behind me when I'm working here in my office. I take it with me in my backpack when I go places. And sometimes I sketch down ideas. I note down things I want to do. And more importantly, I have it open in front of me while I'm playing. While we're playing the game, I'm making notes of what the player characters are doing, what's going on in the world, and how I'm building up around it. If you're the kind of person that keeps a schedule book anyways, like I have this, this is a Hobonichi uh, Weeks but this is the mega weeks. So basically this is my weekly schedule, although this is actually my wargaming campaign, but this is my weekly schedule. And then in the back, I have all this graph paper and I can just note down whatever I want as I'm going. You see something interesting. You see a poster for a movie. You see a commercial. Somebody talks about something in a blog or podcast or a video. You just note it down. Keep yourself some notes. Writing it down will just put it in your brain so it's there to churn around later. Always be prepping so you kind of never have to prep. 
So as far as how much we prep once the campaign gets going, generally one or two sessions out, and how long that takes depends on what you're doing. In my sandbox world, which I'll talk about in a second, basically I have a system where I only need to put a few minutes in right after the game and right before the game to keep my mind going along with my always be prepping. But like I said, every once in a while, I'll run a published module. That means I might sit down for an hour or two and read through it, make changes, make notes for my system, etc. So that might be a little bit more, but that adventure is going to be five sessions, 10 sessions, whatever, right? So the bulk of the work is done before I actually get it to the table. But before we get into that, let's talk about the beginning of the campaign. So what do we need to run a campaign? We need things for the player characters to do and things for them to interact with. And what I like to do is make some lists. And what you do is you just keep, you start your list and as you use things from it, you just keep replacing them. One of these lists should be NPCs. And you don't need a lot here. The closer the NPC is to the party, the more you need. So in, in other words, if you're going to have a quest giver, you're going to want to have a couple of different a couple sentences describing, you know, who they are, what they're trying to figure out, maybe their resources, like how much they could pay, how many troops they could bring to bear if they get attacked by the player characters, you know, who they are, what some basic stuff, just a little write up about them. You don't necessarily even need stats. It kind of depends on the system, obviously. If it's the king, you don't need much at all. The king is wise and fair, or the king is a tyrant. That's all you need. The player characters at the beginning of the campaign are probably not going to interact with the king enough to need to know more than that. Why is the king fair? Why is the king a tyrant? What else is going on? Is there a vizier somewhere? That's stuff they can figure out if they're interested and if they get to the point where they can actually interact with the king. In my campaigns, first level characters off the street aren't usually seeing the king. So again, handful of NPCs that are close to the PC, maybe some large figures they might know about in the world, And then a couple of factions is a good idea, too, just to kind of set a tone. So maybe there's the captain of the guard who works for the ruler of the town that they're in, and that's a faction, right? The guardsmen. And then you might have a thieves' guild. And that's it. You just need some rough stuff so people know what's around. Get a feel for it so people can start talking about it. Oh, the thieves' guild's not happy because blah, blah, blah. They've been cracking down on this and that. This creates a little bit of kind of realism in the town, but that's it. A couple of factions, why they oppose each other. You don't need 10 factions. You don't need all the leaders. You don't need all this stuff. You just need the basic idea. There is a thieves guild. There's a guard. The guard is cracking down on the thieves guild, or maybe the guard is corrupt and working with the thieves guild. That's up to you. You're going to want to key, and we just again, read those uh, just three hexes articles, but you're going to want to key a handful of close locations. So a dungeon possibly, or a, a ruin that people go to, or a magical pool or caravan routes. A couple things around this, so the player characters have something to, to, to work on. And then you want to come up with a couple of mysterious locations. Locations that the player characters can't can't get to right now. I was going to say ever, but can't get to right now, but they know they exist. This is you feeding the story to the future. Well, far to the west is the misty mountain where a dragon is said to sleep with gold beyond your dreams. Okay, well, we can't go there right now because there's all this trek of wilderness in between. Nobody's been there in 100 years. Maybe the dragons are there. Maybe they're not. As the characters level up, they can access those areas. But in the beginning, they're kind of just setting, a, again, a tone for the setting. For instance, in the Andre Dorn's Witch World, there's this like set of impassable mountains that blocks the kind of main setting that it starts in from, without spoiling too much, from a land on the other side. And there's reasons why nobody crosses those mountains. But right from the beginning, you'd know they exist. Well, the sea is to the east, to the west, there's impassable mountains, to the north is is the enemy state that we're at war with, to the south of barren lands, right? That's it. Oh, in the barren lands, there's said to be an ancient tomb of a hero who uh, was buried with a magical sword. The, the, in the enemy lands, they, uh, they hoard gold in, in their caverns below the cities. If you sneak in there, you might be able to steal some. The mountains are impassable. The sea is something they're not going to deal with right away. Let's talk about rolling the campaign out. So we have an idea and we say, okay, we want to run something like Andre Norton's Witch World. And the you know witches are basically uh, the, the political power. There is a faction that's vying against the witches because they think they have too much power. There's impassable mountains. There's an enemy to the north. All the stuff I just said. And basically the player characters get some kind of a plot. Maybe they're 
they're part of a group that's sent to explore the mountains. Why are they impassable? Or maybe they get the rumor and they're going to head out to that wasteland to try to find that magic sword. So they've got something to go with at first, right? You've got a couple of different locations that they can head towards. They've got a few NPCs that they can deal with. Maybe the, especially if they're being hired to, to explore, maybe the Explorers Guild or something. Maybe they are somehow in league. If one of them is a magic user, somehow they have a connection. They ultimately want to be one of these like political witches. And this sets a tone for what's going on. They're going to play three or four sessions, maybe five. And as you go through these sessions, kind of just keeping it loose, they're introducing NPCs, they're exploring those initial locations, you're adding other locations as you go, hooks. Then you want to sit down and say, okay, what are the players interested in? What has been going on? What have they been grabbing onto? Where are they headed? You can just think this yourself and you should. But then you should probably have some kind of, if you have a Discord chat with them, or you just talk a little bit before or after the sessions, or however you do it, get a feel for it. Say, hey, I noticed that you guys have been uh, trying to get in to see the, the the political workings of the, the witches. Is that something you're interested in? Are you leaning towards trying to get in with them? What is your plans there? And they might say, well, we don't know. But they'll probably have some kind of an idea of, oh, that's, yeah, that's interesting to us. Or no, no, we're not interested in that at all. We just wanted that one item they had. And we're really interested in the mountains. Okay, cool. Get a feel for what they're going after so that you can then start to plan in that direction. The wastelands, if nobody ever went there for that sword, is nothing. It just, there's a sword there. Someday, if the party's interested, you can develop that. For now, they're more interested in the enemy lands to the north where they've been stealing gold from the caverns below the towns. That's what they're interested in. Just prep that. What do we do for prepping? So there's three stages to to my prepping, if you will. There's the once a month or so. Now, I play weekly. Once a month or so, I sit down for maybe half an hour, 45 minutes. I take all my always be prepping notes, and I kind of insert them into future hooks. I draw some extra hexes. I figure out what might be going on. I read a module that I might want to add. You know, and this is something I just sit down and do when I have time. After each session, and this is key. So during each session, I should say, while things are going on, I'm making notes. I'm adding, I have a list of names with like general, you know, ideas. Uh, like, so if they encounter somebody, I'll grab my name and I'll be like, okay, that's John Smith and they're the blacksmith. I'll note that down. If it's a nothing thing, I just leave it. If it's something like, okay, they found this with them. They like this guy. They're doing that. I will note it in my notes. I'm going to, as we're going. When the session's over and everybody's left and I sit down to kind of clean up, I open up my notebook and I look at all my notes and I expand on them. And during this period, I also do experience points personally because I use experience points and I make notes of what's going on. So they fought these goblins and three goblins escaped. Okay, where did they go? I think about that. Where could the goblins possibly be? Do I need to roll something or I'm just going to say this is what happened? Do I know what would happen? Make a couple rolls. You know, I spend a few minutes just kind of figuring out what went, what went on that wasn't like on camera, if you will, right? Like what happened when those goblins left? What happened to that guy that they got into a fight with at the bar? What happened to the family that they, they rescued from the wolves? Where did these people go and where are they now in the world? Make some notes right away while it's fresh in your mind. Then I close my book. And I do my always be prepping plan throughout the week. If I see something, I read something, I make notes on my back. And then 20 minutes or so before the session, or sometimes I'll do it in the morning if I'm playing like right after I'm done with work or something, I read my notes again. I flip to a blank page and I make some notes of what might actually be happening this session based on that. So I wrote that the family that they saved from the wolves was happy and went back and told the town so if the player player gets to go to town, they're going to be received as heroes. I, I wrote down that when the goblin left, maybe I'd rolled some dice. They went and found another group of goblins and they're planning on ambushing the PCs. Where, did, where are they setting up an ambush? To the west. Well, if the PCs go to the west, they're going to get ambushed by goblins. The guy they got into a fight with at the bar, they've got some friends. So if the PCs stay in that town another night, they're going to be robbed or Someone's going to try to rob them anyways. <laughs> and that's basically it. Now I, we sit down for the session and then the PCs just do nothing I planned at all. But that's the life of a DM, right? <laughs> so anyways, that's kind of how I do it. The Once you get going, it's just a matter of adding little bits that the PCs are interested in. If somebody asks you about something like, you know, my cleric is getting higher level and I'm going to want to build a temple. 
what can I do? Then you can say, well, let me sit down and figure some stuff out. We'll talk back and forth and we'll figure that out. You don't need to know right on the spot. You just need to know the general vibe of your setting. And that's the reason why you do that step number one. Think about the fiction that you're emulating, that you're being inspired by. What would happen in those worlds if the PCs did the things that they did? And then just go in that direction. You can change it if you want, but if you don't really know if it's up in the air, just go with what the fiction would have done. I would love to know what you guys do as far as prepping. I know there's that whole trope of I prep longer than I play or the trope of I don't prep at all and I just wing it. But I think somewhere in the middle is really where the, the meat of the, the DMing is. I'd also love to know what tools you guys use. I'll put a link to those two things I mentioned in the description. If I can find that notebook, I'll also put that down there. I will put a link to my Discord server. Join up over there and we have a whole room just about running games. So talk with everybody over there, see what they're doing. Also, there's a link to my Patreon if you'd like to support the channels. And I'll talk to you soon.